Brexit Britain is on the verge of a victory as Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been handed an easy solution to keep an industry expected to be worth £400 billion in the UK. This year's Queen speech laid out the government's vision for the UK after the pandemic, with science and healthcare placed at the heart of the UK's economic recovery. In his statement in the House of Commons, Mr. Johnson highlighted his intention to build on the extraordinary work of UK scientists during COVID-19 and announced plans for a new Advanced Research and Inventions Agency, ARIA. ARIA will establish a UK agency to search for groundbreaking scientific discoveries and will fund high-risk, high-reward research and development in the UK. Welcoming the announcement, David Morris, who is chair of the Parliamentary Space Committee, said it was a huge step forward for Brexit Britain and that Mr. Johnson now needs someone to tackle space. He also explained the shortcomings of current legislation, giving Mr. Johnson an easy way to add a huge industry to the UK's CV. He told Express.co.uk exclusively, this is going to need a major reshape, it's not that they've been doing things wrong, it's that there are more things happening now and the space industry is starting to become a lot more profitable. You can see the success of SpaceX, having people on the moon again doesn't seem that far away and space tourism is being developed. In this country, we have the Space Act that was put together a number of years ago, but because it's such a huge undertaking to set up a new act, it's by and large been handed over to the CAA. They just overlap their regulations on it, that's where the problems are occurring. The Space Industry Act was introduced by Chris Grayling when he was Transport Secretary to extend and improve the regulatory framework for commercial spaceflight activities to be carried out from spaceports in the UK and launches and other activities overseas by UK entities. It operates in conjunction with the Outer Space Act 1986, but Mr. Morris claims there is currently unlimited liability for sending up anything ballistic. He added, if we sent a satellite up and something went wrong, the insurance would be unlimited. There's a cap on it in most countries, this is driving all the operators abroad to use rockets in places like French Guiana. We're missing out on the business on UK soil. That is one area that needs identifying and work to overcome it. We have to start looking at the Space Act and what we can do to achieve the goals and we need to do it quickly. In an update to the bill in October, the government announced, we are proposing to limit operator liability and use the modeled insurance requirement approach, which is considered to be critical to enabling launch and unlocking the benefits of spaceflight. Since then, the UK Space Agency has confirmed it is working on producing a calculation of the realistic amount of damage that could be caused by each mission. It added, this requires complex modeling which is currently being developed and will be ready to implement in line with the first launches of the early 2020s. The government agency confirmed to Express.co.uk it hopes to have limited liability regulations in force by summer 2021. Sarah Boyle, Director of Regulation at the UK Space Agency, said, as we work towards the first satellite launches from UK spaceports from 2022, the government has consulted closely with the space industry to make sure that new laws and regulations governing all UK spaceflight will be the most effective in the world. Growing the UK's launch capability will help create new jobs and economic benefits to communities right across the UK, and we look forward to making Britain a launch destination of choice for the world's best space companies as well as our growing homegrown space sector. Currently, Quasi Quarteng is Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy Secretary and Amanda Soloway is the Undersecretary who looks after space. But Mr. Morris, who is MP for Morecambe and Loonsdale, says someone needs to fully focus on issues like these now to protect an industry that directly contributes £14.8 billion to the UK economy and is expected to grow to £400 billion by 2030. He believes appointing a space minister could be one of the most important decisions of the post-Brexit era. Mr. Morris added, we've already started putting huge investments into space and it has to now be someone's responsibility to resolve issues like this quickly. You need somebody who can interface with the Director General of ESA, the UK Space Agency and NASA. 
people are coming to me now to ask questions because it's such a niche area that people in the space industry are going to those they know. You saw what happened with OneWeb last week when it got floated, it paid for itself in one day. And that's after a lot of people said it was a bad decision, not it wasn't, the government got it right and we've proved that. There's lots more to address and eventually everyone is going to settle down from Brexit and start working together again. Quote.